So um, I guess it's just two of us. How are you? <laughs> Good. We can tell you woke up a few minutes ago. <laughs> okay, thank you for being here with me. Um, so this is the basically first um, presentation session of our research methodology group. Uh, as promised, I will present about uh, um, how to use a sleep box to take smart note to assist your academic writing. So let me just fast share my screen here. Can you can you see my yeah. presentation? No? Yeah? Yeah, I can see your I can see your screen, but oh yeah, okay. Now now you can see, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. This is the same way you posted online, right? Yes, yes. I just posted on the page of uh, um, mm -hmm. event two. So uh, if you want something in your local, uh, you can download it. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, th this method, it's uh, rather new to myself as well. So in German, it's called the Zatter Custom method. Zatter Custom in German means um, cars in box. So this is a really um, from a very well, a very, very popular, like a productive sociologist. Um, he created this method, but of course it's not him first, but he applied it very, very smartly to produce a lot of things. So mm -hmm. today we are going to learn how to use this system in our own research. So first thing I wanna ask, which one comes first to you? Research questions or read paper first? Mm. I guess it, for me it can be both, but most frequent one is um, research questions first. If I have research questions, I, think I will go back to look for um, relevant papers. Mm. But also sometimes when I read papers, I'll, I'll get some ideas. Mm. Oh, here's a research question uh, I can do. Um, yeah, I think it can be both, but most frequently is research question first. Mm. So usually you have some guiding questions first, and then you look into literature to yeah. get more inspiration, and then you modify the question possibly to go on with your reading, right? Right. So um, I often do that as well, but um, according to this book, that's also the book that I highly recommend everybody to read. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very new book, but it summarizes quite well how to take smart notes out of you know, following the rule of um, um, a sleeper box system that we mentioned earlier. So uh, you can directly download it from the link I provided also on the screen or on the event two page of our our group. So this presentation partly use content from the that book. Um, so, but not all of them, of course. Uh, I also integrate my own experience to um, just give you a more, let's say, localized experience from me. So from this book, it introduced five step um, towards academic writing. So first, well, that, that's before going into details, let's go back to the questions earlier, what comes first. So according to this author, Ahlems, um, he said that um, actually he prefers, he prefers starting from reading literature and then come up with the uh, questions in a more, target way. So um, he criticized the uh, approach that uh, students come up with the research questions first, especially when the student doesn't know much about the field. And they just, you know, they pull out of their brain, which has no deep knowledge of the topic, and then just, just, just came up with an idea that may be already existing or be already well researched and then they just dive into the literature to look for um, positive literature that supports the, 
the, the process of answering their questions. So he also proposed that there's a, a very well-known psychology effect called um, affirmation bias. So people tend to look for those things they agree rather than the things they disagree. So yeah. let's say if you're looking for a positive a positive relationship between uh, reading and uh, your your uh, learning performance, then you are going to bump into a lot of facts that you agree with this uh, positive, they agree with this positive relationship, and you're going to kind of avoid those arguments saying reading more will actually deteriorate your learning performance. So that is affirming bias, and we constantly encounter that let's say we want to prove something uh, that is positive but we always look for positive evidence in the literature so that is something we as researchers need to be very aware of so now let's go to this five step towards academic writing so he recommended first you should start a reading already making notes out of this uh, reading literatures from paper one, two, three, four, you know, just read. And then you take a lot of notes, build up your sleep box system, and then you develop your topics, questions, or so research projects bottom up within your note, note system. And after a while, you build so many notes that you can directly write from your notes system. And that's that's the approach he recommends. He recommends. Okay. So we mentioned about this very productive sociologist Nicholas Luhemann. That's his name. He is basically very very good expert in doing this note taking system. So he brought it to the to the best use to his work. He's a German and he's famous for his work in sociology and uh, system theories. And he, during his, I think, 40 years lifespan of career, he published over 70 books, over 400 scholarly articles, not just in one field, but over multiple fields. Mm. And he is famous for his extensive use of the sleep box. In his sleep box, there were over 90,000 index cards for his research, and that's a very incredible amount. So no wonder he can finish his PhD um, writing and the, and the, the second kind of uh, um, P no, like a, a monography work after PhD thesis in just, uh, I think, a one year or two. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> so he write out of his sleep box, he considers sleep box his thinking, his extension of brain. And so let's look into it. Now, um, you know, he passed away already and all his over 90,000 um, index cards are being digitalized by a research team. So if you go online, you can see all his notes there. Um, so it's still an ongoing process. Not all of it um, is posted online, but through their analysis, we can see um, the, the, the original status of the notes as well as their structures. So if you're interested, you, you should go there to, to have a look. So one very important thing from the sleep box of Luhemann is um, he doesn't use linear indexing numbers, you know, in, in order to, to mark his um, notes. He used the combination of numbers and uh, letters to create this unlimited um, lattice work or grids to insert notes mm -hmm. anywhere in the system. So he doesn't have the limit, you know, he, he can very for free, he, he has a very, very high level of freedom to insert his notes in the system because in his note system is like greed, not like mm -hmm. one line, okay? So uh, 
that research team analyzed the topics emerging from his notes, and this is very much like a brain, right? Like a lot of topics, clusters, and uh, uh, branches. And they were very amazed by this, you know, how many things actually can happen in that small sleeper box. Um, it's, it's almost just like what I said, an extension of your brain, your second brain to think. So the idea of sleep box is not as an archive, but as a thinking system to help uh, reduce your brain's cognitive load. Because over time, our um, very few information got pumped into our long-term memory. We, can re we cannot remember everything, right? Mm -hmm. So with the uh, extension, this kind of assistance system to our brain can be very effective and uh, useful for our thinking process. So um, now Sleepbox method is uh, basically a knowledge management system and as well as a note taking method that can help you produce research outputs more effectively. So in order to utilize this system, you need three tools at least. One is something you can write on very fast. It can be paper and pen. So one important thing about this tool is it has to be handy to you all the time. So anytime when there's a idea coming to you, you can find this tool very fast to, to just jot, jot down your idea. So this is for fast idea capturing. So I use Evernote because I have Evernote on my computer, on my mobile phone, and the mobile phone is always with me. So um, I can capture the idea with my Evernote uh, app on the phone. And uh, the second one is a reference management system. So it can be Zotello, Mandali, and other reference manager system because um, very, very often we need to organize our references very carefully because uh, when we write, we need to get it very fast. Also, we need to use it as kind of a library to browse to see what to read, right? So uh, I use Zotalo, but you can choose the one that you feel more convenient with. And the third one is the sleep box. That's where you record all your intelligence in. Okay, so um, there, there's diff there are different softwares that can be used as a sleep box. Uh, but I again use Evernote because um, I, it's very handy to me. I often check it and uh, um, I want to constantly look into it. Um, so I prefer it is synchronized both on my phone and on my laptop. Mm -hmm. But you can also use Joplin is open source um, software for realizing the same purpose. So that you can choose yourself by trying. And there are four types of notes um, in this system. So one is fleeting notes, that is to capture fast ideas. It can be trashed once it is organized. Second one is literature notes, that is basically, for instance, those sentences you highlighted, you know, before using this system. You highlight those contents you feel that can be used later for your research. Those things you capture it as literature notes, but not directly quote. Um, you can just put the page number and some keywords or summary to the content in your notes. The idea is you should, you should avoid directly copy and paste into your notes because that is a passive reading. You should summarize what you read and to write down your notes in your own words that is self-reflection and that can help you remember better and that can help you organize your literature notes into permanent notes later much better so literature notes is um, are basically um, contents you want to remember or reflect on or organize later into your permanent notes in the sleep box. So the third type of permanent notes, so literature notes and uh, permanent notes, they are both permanent actually. They will not be trashed. 
Okay. Unlike fleeting notes, they will be trashed, literature notes and permanent notes, they stay in your sleep box. So for permanent notes, that's the core of sleep box. Um, this is the opportunity to reflect on your literature notes and to summarize them in a structure that is highly relevant to your research. Does that make sense to you? So literature notes, for instance, is, okay, today I read the article one, and then I make five notes. I may not make any connection between them when I take uh, down the literature notes, but when I do permanent notes, I need to think, okay, all five um, literature notes I made earlier, how they are related to my knowledge building, how they are related to my current research. I have to organize them, reorganize them in a way that it can fit into my current knowledge system, fit into my research topic or research project. So it will not look like the same to literature notes. It will be a further self-reflection on what you'll have. It might only generate one permanent notes out of five literature notes. And okay. another key point is that, again, you should self-reflect, you should write in your own words, never copy-paste. Okay. And also, during this process of writing permanent notes, you have to consider the links between notes. So in your, in your knowledge building system or in your research topic uh, um, permanent notes system, if there are already five permanent notes in the system, now you are generating a new one, you have to think um, by including the existing five notes to, to see what kind of links they have. So you have to generate this kind of links. That means every time when you go to this step, you look into the whole system of your sleep box again and think how the new nodes can integrate into this new uh, into this existing system so this way you review your knowledge review your structure of sleep box every time when you insert new nodes okay mm. so then the fourth project notes um, is basically related to specific project they can be archived um, into certain uh, they can be archived once the project finished okay so because i so far only have have one project for my postdoc so i probably have just one project and note uh, pro project notes um, library so if I have a second project later, I will archive the current one and create a new um, project notes library, for instance. So fleet notes should be with you all the time. It doesn't have any format. And as long as you can capture the idea very fast, even just one word or one URL link you needed to read later, um, it doesn't have format. You just like writing on your, on your a piece of paper that fast. The idea is you should not waste any inspiration that enter your your mind. You should capture it with your uh, fleet notes. So I summarize five steps that uh, um, I follow to um, utilize the sleep box system to do my research. So first step is to make an entry of a citation. So what I want to read now, basically, to mark it in my system, what it is, what the article is, what the book is, what the report is, that is a full citation to the thing I'm going to read now. Second one is to read a paper, so start reading the thing, and create a literature notes when you are reading. The third step is write a summary in the entry of the citation. So um, I already write down, let's say five or 10 literature notes after I read the whole thing. And then now I need to summarize what this article or what is this paper about in my own word, not directly copy the abstract or the result of the paper, but really sit down there, look at your notes and think about what this study is about. And then write a short paragraph and enter it into your citation record that you created in step one. And then step four is repeat step two and three to read more papers, more articles, 
take more literature notes, write down more summaries of those readings. And the five one is write permanent notes from what you read that day. So this is a daily five steps. <laughs> Every day you execute, you execute these five steps until you finish uh, writing your permanent notes in, in your sleep box. So I'm going to elaborate on these five steps later with the live demonstration. And uh, now let's look into details of uh, this each step. So step one, as I said, that, okay, this is the beginning of uh, recording your uh, in your sleep box. So full citation usually is needed. So APA style full citation. And you should have a format of reflecting on this citation. So I'm going to um, give you a template later to, 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 to have a, a view um, at my citation entry. You can come up with your, your template um, on your own, uh, you know, from there. So second one is you read the paper and start taking notes. So um, one note, one idea. Don't mix them. Don't say, okay, this is about learning performance. At the same time, I want to also write the author's uh, background, something like that. Separate them. If you want to write two things, separate them into two single notes. Don't mix them up. Well, if you're talking about relationship, that's different. Let's say one is correlated with another one, but still it's just one thing. Okay, you, you, you don't say, okay, this is a cognitive ability, this is a performance, they are co correlated. Maybe you should divide them into three notes saying, okay, this is, note one is a cognitive ability, note two is a performance, third is they are correlated. Okay, so separate them as much as possible, keep it simple to one idea, one note. And don't directly copy quotes. I actually sometimes got lazy as copy co quotes from, from the PDF, but uh, we should not. <laughs> okay, we along our practice, so we should reduce copying behavior, increase self-reflection behavior, but because we should not cheat on ourselves. <laughs> like we should not cheat our own learning, right? So when you really feel you needed to quote something to be used later, let's say, oh, this definition of entrepreneurship is very insightful. I want to reuse it later. Then you can create a note saying, okay, definition of entrepreneurship, reference to this citation, uh, page number is 18, and keywords is definition, for instance, something like this. You don't copy the whole paragraph to your, to your note. The third one is once finishing reading a paper, write a summary very fast before you forget. Um, one, one secret of Luhemann that he can be so productive is once he finished reading one article, he never goes back because um, he already break that reading into literature notes and already self-reflected on it into permanent notes, right? So he already write a summary about what this article is. When he reads the summary, it brings back all those notes to his brain. So he doesn't need to read that article again. So in this way, he can be very fast in going through um, different articles in the topic, but never needed to repeat the reading. So the fourth is you follow two to three, um, as I repeated before, to cover other papers until you reach the end of the day, then you write, uh, you move them in a self-reflective way to become your new permanent notes in the system. So um, usually if, if this, so, if you already have new um, existing notes in the system, you have um, to consider where to put your new notes, right? So um, if there's no new topic, uh, if there's a new topic in the, in the um, permanent notes that you're going to insert into the, your, your system, you're going to put it behind everything. 
Okay, you, you are going to index if there's already one, two, three nodes, you can create a four and put it in the fourth card there. And then you say, okay, this is the fourth note I make today. It is linked to one and two. So you put one and two cards link to the fourth card to make link to each other, okay? So you also need to make sure from time to time you do some index notes to reflect on your system, to find some topics and uh, create links to those cards in that index cards. So this is creating some entry points for your cars. It's like creating a branch and then you will go to different uh, leaves. Okay, so that is index cars. Um, because when creating permanent nodes is creating leaves. When you create, uh, well, creating leaves with the links to other leaves, but when you create index cars, they are like creating branches of the tree it will lead to leaves okay so that's the basically five steps a day that you repeat to create and uh, mark your permanent notes in the sleep box so i summarize that up and uh, um, if you look into the book that i suggested earlier they have different um, kind of approaches i i read that book Mm, but I have to localize it to myself because, uh, you know, um, everybody has their way of reading or taking notes or um, tools they pick also influence their note taking behavior. So um, after a while's trial, I, I came up with mine. So I'm going to live demonstrate you very soon. But to summarize, Luhmann took over 90,000 cars in his life at the average speed of six cars a day. So if, let's say we do three cars a day, we can <laughs> also achieve quite well in our career. So, so the, the, the important thing is we have to be consistent and make a long-term habit. Okay, so now let's move to my sleep box. So, can you see my? I can my... only see a computer screen right now. Oh, really? Uh, what about now? Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm, it was yeah. Okay. So, so this is um, Evernote that I use as mm -hmm. my sleep box. So as I said, you can pick other tools, but I'm gonna use this to demonstrate to you. So another tool, the reference, the reference, um, management system I, I pick is Zotello. So this is the Zotello. So let me show you first um, this sleeper box system I have. So bibliography is recording citations I'm gonna read, right? The, the articles I'm gonna read. So I didn't read much as you can see. <laughs> but I was experimenting with the method for, for long, trying to find out the proper way to do this. And it turned out to be very beneficial for, for this. So um, this is a template I came up with to record um, bibliography in the in the in my sleep box. So I have Google Scholar citations. So how many times it got cited by others? Reference that's a full citation of the article, and a keyword to say what kind of theoretical field it is. Let's say it's about entrepreneurship education. Then I put entrepreneurship education here. So my reading summary, that is after I finished reading that article, I, I wrote a short paragraph to introduce what this paper is about. So if I really needed to quote something, I'm going to put page numbers here and some description, description of what it is. If sometimes figures and tables are very insightful and useful, I'm going to also put page numbers to the figures and tables here. And uh, this one, I'm uh, thinking about dropping it because I'm not uh, thinking about uh, creating links uh, between bibliography records. 
So this too, I'm gonna probably drop. But let's see um, what I have. Let's see, for instance, this one. Um, it has been cited for more than 1,000 times. It's a full citation of it that I directly generated from here, Zotello. Okay, so, so I basically imported everything into my Zotello from Google Scholar, for instance. So let me give you a fast demonstration. So I have this Google Scholar button. If I go here, I, let's say we look for this one and then you zoom in to Google Scholar and then you click this Zotello um, plugin to Google Chrome. And then you are going to see a list of uh, reference you want to import into your library. So let's say I want to import this one. I click OK. It's saving to my default default mm -hmm. folder. It, when I jump back to Zotello, you will see the record is right in front of my face. So if there's a full text attached to this reference, it's going to be downloaded automatic, auto, automatically. But um, I prefer to put every articles I downloaded in the same folder. I call it all articles. Okay, mm -hmm. so I use the, the, the last name of the first author plus the, the year as the, um, as the naming limit method for all the files into this folder so i don't want to jump into this you know default folder default folder of the the software so i'm mm -hmm. gonna just uh, drag it to all article all articles uh what's the name of it okay scar mo scar mo yeah that that's it oh so i have I, ha I have already one record of it. So I'm gonna just, let's say we link to this one. So right click, add a link to file, and we go for scar mode, this one. Okay. So I'm gonna just delete this one because uh, it's linking to different place. Now, when I click here, it's opening the file. It's opening the file in my target folder in mm -hmm. all articles, okay? So um, I have to suggest that you use the um, add attachment attach link to file because if you do otherwise like attach store a copy of file it's going to create a new copy of your file to the default folder of the software and then you will when you do the annotation on your file it's going to be saved in the software's default folder and then you will create some conflict mm -hmm. over the process so you have to organize your files in a more consistent way so when you do annotation in the document, it's saved always in the same place. Okay, so uh, we already have this one. Now I'm gonna read this one, let's say. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna create a bibliography, and then you, you choose bibliography, you choose a copy to clipboard, you click OK, and then you go back to your sleep box system here. Let's say now, I'm gonna just duplicate the note of the template and I'm gonna paste this one here. Mm. Okay, so, so the citation is like 19 here. And then other things I will fill in later. And uh, I'm gonna use this person's name as the file name and plus the year. Mm. So this is the step one you create a citation entry in your bibliography library okay so everything is in alphabet order that is easy to to navigate and then fleeting notes is no matter what kind of weird idea you have this is recorded here okay then you organize it into either um to write or other things that you you, you want 
if we follow the standard procedure without considering fleeting notes, the second step we are going to arrive at literature notes. So we're going to start reading that paper, right? So as you can see here, how I organize my literature notes is based on the citation. So the first article I read was from this person. So I create the first note as 1.1. So one, the first number before the first dot represent one independent citation, okay? One, one independent article. So one article, two article, three article, four, five, six. So in the third article, Fayole 2013, I have in total 25 literature notes. So I index it as a 3.1 to 3.25. Okay, so so every every um, literature note I have the template as what is the title of this note, and then what's the content of this note, and uh, which reference it is uh, linked to. Okay, so how to create this one? So if I jump, if I click there, it's going back to the bibliography library so how to create that link is you just right click on the citation and you copy internal link okay. and then you go to literature note and let's go back here and then if you go down you you paste I see. yeah so you will be directly linked to the bibliography it is referring to okay so as you can see that um, by recording literature notes, you are not thinking about structure at all of the whole thing. You're just, you are just writing down notes related to the content you are reading. You summarize them in a way that you understand and you just do one after another until you finish the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after let's say you've, you, you reach the end of uh, the, the, the um, literature notes taking process, you finish the whole reading, and then you go back to where you created uh, the, um, let's say, where you created this one. Oh, I didn't make a eh, lazy person. Okay, <laughs> so you go back to the, um, to the li library of bibliography, and you, you, you write a reading summary like this into your library. Okay, so up till now you have let's say four literature notes and the one bibliography note recording what this study is about, okay. So now we move to the sleep box. So now as you can see in my sleep box, the structure is much more complex compared to literature notes before. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so you, you don't need to worry about if you don't have anything yet in your sleep box, don't need to worry about the structure. Just write down the first note, the second note, even they are completely different, not related, it's fine. Just write it down, write it down. And then after five, six, seven, eight, you are going to find some patterns. You're going to find some topics to elaborate. And then you're going to build up this kind of structure. So for instance, I build up, for instance, um, I use it this way. So one, one is competencies. If you go down to two is, where's my two? Oh, I didn't have my two here. <laughs> Probably I deleted the two along the process, but I'm gonna add something later to two. But three is the success factors. Seven is the human capital. So I rearrange my structure several times so that's why the number is a bit crooked but it doesn't matter later i can feel in new things that's the flexibility of this system right so um i use the single digit one two three four seven uh, like like this to um to capitalize capitalize the letters as the title attached to it as a topic index so let's say um, competencies is actually a topic, right? So I, I don't put an, anything here yet. I just use it as like a branch to say mm -hmm. inside this folder, following after one, it's going to be 
notes related to, to competencies. So 1.1 1 .1 or 1.2.2.3, they are all under competencies. Okay, so um, now if you go to 1.2, you see another capital letters, the skills. So that's another topic that I'm interested in. So I capitalize that to highlight it. And anything following 1.2 is related to skills. Okay, mm -hmm. so you use uh, um, so you use the the depth of the um, of the um, numbers to demonstrate the structure of uh, your notes. For instance, um, under this 1.2 skills, 1.21 is hierarchy of entrepreneurial skills. And then 1.22 is skills, mediators, performance, it's related to um, relations, okay? So, and 1.23 is related with faces, so between the broken link between faces and skills. So they are all like subtopics under skills that I want to further explore based on my reading. Is it is it clear to you? So it is back came to a permanent note. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Yes. It permanent. It, yeah. It's just I name it as a slip box. Sorry, I should have explained it earlier. So mm -hmm. this is permanent notes indeed. And uh, every time when you find oh this is the topic I really want to explore further, you can just uh, capitalize it like what I did to just mm -hmm. highlight, highlight it. So you see that I read like how, how many so far? <laughs> Not too many, let's say um, five, let's say 15 to 20, okay? So I, I read 15 to 20 articles and then I was able to come up with a structure that already can lead me to a very interesting subtopic called skills and tasks. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the topic I want to write in, in the next uh, stage, actually. So how's the structure here in the knowledge uh, structure I built from those uh, 78 literature notes, I built from the umbrella of competencies, there's skills as a concept under it. And uh, under skills, there's a missing link with the tasks, missing links with the business development phases. They are all like research gaps that, that are worth of exploration. Okay. And uh, there are also like success factors of entrepreneurs, there are human capital theories, and there are a not, there's another. Um, branch uh, related to entrepreneurship education. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, this is index notes I want to show you. So as I said before in presentation, uh, you have to make up index notes, which creates um, the branch to different leaves, right? This is one example. So I want to create a, an index note to aggregate or verify relationships, relations, I would say, verify the relations in the literature. So I have entrepreneurship education positively influences intention. It also positively influence, influences uh, self-efficacy, something like this. And then you link back to those uh, notes you have in the system. Okay, so so this this way, when you have a very fine relations in the literature, for instance, later when you do literature review, it can be very handy to you, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the importance of index notes, and it also can help you jump back to what you have written before. So it's a and and entering into different uh, notes you have in the system. So that's the that's the permanent notes you have. And then um, I also separate two rights from the sleeper box, from the permanent notes. So two rights are, ba are basically what idea I came up with as my, as my intended writing papers. 
Okay, mm -hmm. so it can be very, very short description of what problem I feel like interesting and I want to write a paper about it. Mm -hmm. You may probably not write all of them, but it's a good start from there, right? Yeah. So these things you have to record down. So then you can evaluate over the time by more notes, more understanding, and then you can decide if you want to proceed with this idea or this idea has already been done by another research. Now you have to come up with a new idea or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you have to record your ideas somewhere. And I also separate uh, concepts and theories from the sleep box because I think they can be a little bit mixing, too mixing in sleep box. Um, this kind of uh, um, concepts or theories, they can be constantly used in different studies, right? Mm -hmm. So I separate them from the sleep box, from the permanent notes. So okay. here you have, for instance, concepts, I have entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship. So of course, different scholars give different definitions. So you can extend this content over time. So maybe one time, one day you accumulated like 100 definitions of entrepreneurs, then you write a review paper of it, right? Something like that. So you have this concepts list that you constantly add. And then you have these theories you also constant add to your, to your system. Let's say what is the theory of planned behavior, where you can find this to read more, something like that. So you also aggregate theories to your, um, to your research. Mm -hmm. And one good thing about uh, um, you know, aggregating these two in your library is that they also kind of build up, build up uh, mental models for you. So mental models are basically widely used concepts and theories, thinking structure, um, from different disciplines, right? So mental models also help you to further build your permanent notes, actually. So that's also highly recommended by the, by the book. You have to um, constantly learn new concepts to um, help you better understand the reality of the world. You have to constantly build up new models, new theories to understand them. And so that will also help you to understand the reality of the world, right? So that's basically what I have here. So I have a bibliography library, I have fleeting notes, I have literature notes, I have permanent notes here, I have what I want to write next, and I have concepts, com concepts book that contain both theories and concepts I accumulate over time. Okay, so that's basically what I want to share with you today. So I hope it is helpful to um, that you have a beginning um, understanding of this sleep box system. So do you have any question? <laughs> yeah, 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 thank you for sharing. You hear my question. So I understand the system you now. It's not hard itself, but I think the hard part is just to make it into your routine. You have to do it daily. I think that was the most difficult for me. You know? mm. So um, my question is, oh here, when at first it said if you uh, make enough notes, you can actually turn into a paper. It's not actually a paper, but it will make up for at least for the literature review part, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, the idea of uh, permanent notes here, it's that it actually it's a, it's a thinking process, you see. Mm. It's not just independent notes you see here. Like what I highlighted here, it actually gives you a trail of development, you know. Mm -hmm. You have, okay, first I have competencies. Now I know skills are under, it's a concept under competencies. Before reading those notes, probably I didn't know. You know, I didn't have a full understanding about competencies. Now I know skills are um, sub-concept of competencies. So if I do some skills research, I probably need to refer back to competencies theory. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a thinking 
process. You know, it's it's a a logic inside the concepts itself. But if you don't build up this kind of structure, let's say if you separate this to one is competency, two is skills, you will not know. Oh, you will not have this very intuitive understanding to see skills are just one branch of competencies, right? Mm. So this, let's say, that's a very good example to also say how it can be built into a, a, a article. So now I know skills are sub-concept of competencies, but when I was reading the literature, I realized a lot of them actually interchange, use these two concepts. So when they are writing competencies, they are actually referring to skills. Mm-hmm. When they are saying in the title, saying I'm, I'm studying about entrepreneurship competencies, but in the measurement scale, scale they use skills as scale of measurement. So mm-hmm. this kind of conflict, you want to know more about it? Is it a common mistake by the scholars or there's some misunderstanding along the, uh, along the way? So it can be built into an article to um, investigate is it common mistake in the literature and what's the consequence of such misusing concepts for instance you know that will get you think that will get you start um, a topic that may not have been touched before by other scholars Yeah, and uh, yeah, sorry, another thing. So um, how it can be built into new new article. So as I said, every note is not from directly from the study. You actually self-reflect it and use your own word to write, right? Mm-hmm. So that means this paragraph, it's not available anywhere. It's original from you. So when you write, you can def, def, definitely directly copy and, and paste in your research, in your paper, in your manuscript. Oh, I see. That is basically like breaking down um, the research papers into different quote, uh, different notes you already took. And then you just organize them in a reasonable way, you know? Mm. So basically it's like a small writing task every day. And then okay. you find uh, the links to put them together as a paper. Okay. I'm kind of going back to uh, what you explained between the example of competency and skill. Mm. How do you uh, choose um, how you say, the tag? The mm. tag? And what if like, there's like an overlapping, and uh, not, not overlapping, like how do you, um, Tag it like which um, sub subtitle do you use? I think that might be hard for me to choose one word or one field to put that in. It is. It is uh, quite quite difficult actually, but um, practice make make the perfect uh, result. I mean, what do you see now on this uh, interface? It seems like very structured already. But I at least erase everything for five times to, to redo the structure. So I think that is also one practice that you cannot avoid when you are doing permanent notes. It's, it's constantly updating, you know, not a big update, but uh, you have to reorganize your thoughts based on the new notes that come in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you were you were talking about how to tax these things. So that is also very related to your interest of the research. Let's say now you are doing like uh, um, the, the, the experts working in Japan. So mm-hmm. you probably al- already have some topics or subtopics that you are interested in. You can just start from there. You can create like one, two, three notes just uh, use the, 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 the subtopic you have at hand that interests you to write another paper that you can just uh, create this kind of three um, f- topic type note as a beginning. And then you read the papers and add a structure 
behind this let's say three subtopics and also you know for instance in Evernote you have this add tags so let's say let's go to skills and the competencies here so I have two tags here mm -hmm. so this is a title okay this is title mm -hmm. title is only to make sense for me when I look at this whole structure okay so tags here are displayed under the title so I use for instance competencies definition this is a very self-defined text so you can mm -hmm. just experiment with it to several uh, notes after a while you will get better idea of it but one principle I remember from the book is saying that um, ideal ideally the the text should not be words that exist in this in this title or comment it should be more abstract so if this is about entrepreneurial skills and competencies maybe using competencies would be not that helpful <laughs> according to the book mm. but you would use for instance a comparison mm. that's more more abstract you know and it, it defines the notes uh, the notes character characteristic is to compare skills and the competencies mm. so uh, this is really an experimental process that, that can vary from person to person so you have to go inside your notes create notes and then play with them for a while to understand right and when you click the tag for example the competency will will the, the system lead you to the, all the relevant yeah yeah so if you go here tags so you have all tags here then when you click let's say i have research gaps here so i have all the articles that i marked with the research gap so let's say i will i will now i have 130 research gaps in my collection i'm gonna definitely write a research gaps <laughs> review you know something like that so it can be helpful in this way yeah. Mm. Well, thank you. I think I'm doing this myself, but first, it's not um not in a systematic way. I just wrote down my notes on a piece of paper, but later I couldn't find the paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how you are doing your notes at present. You use the paper and pen system. Um, well, it, it depends sometimes, like for example, the fleeting notes, when I have the thought, I usually just put in my phone in the, the note, that one I, I keep track, but other time, um, if I'm reading this paper in, in a paper-based version, I just read my notes um, next to it, but if I read um, like an electronic way, I just like a so different, I should, maybe I should stick to one method of reading or oh, at least i should update my written handwritten note uh, to an electronic reading. yeah yeah exactly you know um handwritten notes is very handy a lot of people do that including luhman luhman didn't have use a computer to do his uh, sleep box yeah. system he used yeah. only pen paper cards and a wooden box you know but uh, what amazes everybody is that he does it in such a consistent way it becomes a very amazing output you know? mm -hmm. so he he has paper and pen with him all the time to record his fleeting notes and then he mm -hmm. converts them into permanent notes in the system wow yeah. okay so that, that's one thing how how old not how old whether in what time he he was active in the field because if without computer that must be really like a lot of work to yeah do exactly yeah exactly yeah. and uh, that was very amazing you know you know a lot of people know the secret to success but very few can execute it you know he was interviewed several times and people ask how can you be so productive and he said that i'm never i'm i'm always very transparent towards my my secret to success it's just my sleeper box but nobody you know, nobody can actually do in that pace for 40 years you know yeah. so 
That, that, that is really an amazing achievement. Another thing that I want to share with you is that, yeah, before I actually start using this system, um, I also, you know, sometimes I read on the printed out paper, some I, sometimes I read on my pad, sometimes I read on my laptop. I was mm -hmm. never really putting all my files in one folder. I was never organizing you know, different projects, uh, literature in one library. I was never doing this kind of note taking in one place. But, and that was a very big mistake. So since you are still in early stage of your PhD, I highly suggest to you follow one method, use one tool, be very consistent and unified in just sticking to one. Because when you have multiple choices, you are diverted. Your attention got diversed you know mm -hmm. go, go, not focused and all your all your input will be um allocated in different places they are scattered they are not focused mm -hmm. you know and your your knowledge system over time will be also broken in different ways they are not in one place and mm -hmm. i mean for now maybe you're just writing your your phd thesis that can be fine but after you graduate let's say you shift to different projects and these things will be gone for you but if you build one system, because this is not only note taking for academic writing, this is only not, this is also knowledge management system. Mm -hmm. And now we are in lifelong learning period. That means we are going to learn till we die. Oh. That sounds <laughs> terrible, but, but also <laughs> exciting in a way, you know? So, so you have to manage your knowledge over your lifespan to grow as a person. So that mm -hmm. means every year what you learn, it should not go to trash bin. It should go mm -hmm. into your permanent notes, go into your deep memory so you can build on it, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you have a paper throwing in one folder and then PDF throwing in another digital folder, then you can be a little bit lost over the way. Mm -hmm. And okay. those things can be easily lost after a year or two. You mm -hmm. know, you, you barely remember what happened back then. But with one system to record everything, it's kind of a timeline of growth. It's, mm -hmm. It gives you very short-term reward daily, and it builds up on what you have. And it, it builds up to very interesting things. I mean, as you can see, I didn't write much so far, but I, because of using this system, I wrote two papers. Now they are being uh, modified um, mm -hmm. with, with the sensei together. It's, it's amazing. You know, this kind of efficiency I never experienced before. So you, oh. you, if you don't believe me at the moment, you can write 70 notes following this system and see the result yourself. Now I'm building the third paper out of this system. This is amazing. So um, that's why I put this topic as the first one I want to share with you. I think this is a matter of competency that many PhD students tend to forget, tend to ignore. They jump into reading too fast without building a box to contain the result. Mm -hmm. So you read a lot, forget a lot, and, and the, efficiency, the efficiency got decreased so much, and so much work got just wasted, wasted this way. So think about your system first. Polish mm -hmm. your tools first before you go to chop woods. You know, this is very important to, to build up first. And then with this base, with this home, you bring more fruits inside. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I should try try to start it from t t today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Even you just read one paper a day, that will be like what three hundred sixty five papers. Oh, well, a, probably a, year. a week to like <laughs> <a> fully <laughs> understand one paper. I think. Yeah, but but I mean, you, you are absolutely right there. I mean, sometimes it's really not about a. Uh, quantity it's not about how many papers you write uh, you 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 read it's about how many quality permanent notes you can get from one paper from your reading 
you know, because eventually to count the number of paper you read, it doesn't mean anything. To count right. the knowledge you distill, you cooked out of those paper, that's what matter. That will bring something to your research. Right. Oh, I was wondering, is that what people, like, I mean, scholars do when they write papers, like, all, you all always see, like, uh, they write something, has really, really long uh, in-text citations. Is that what people do? Like, they keep checking, um, like, um, keep checking, like, a literature review of relevant information, and when they cite, they have really, really long in-text citations. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, no, like uh, let, let's say they they quote uh, they, they 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 say a sentence and then they have a bracket with a lot of uh, yeah, citation yeah, inside. Citation. That's what you mean. Yeah. So what's uh, the problem that, with that? You know, no problem. Is that what uh, uh, scholars are doing with that? Because that's why they can ha they can keep have a list, like mm. uh, checking out people say stuff to this. People say stuff to this, and when they find a writing, they just use their nose. Yeah, so exactly. Their... Exactly. Oh. Yeah. So um, when you start writing something, if you have such a note taking system with all the things you wrote in your own words, Sometimes it's just just copy paste. When you copy paste all the things. Let's say now I have this um, competencies and skills. Let's say these are two topics I well developed over the time. I accumulated like twenty or two hundred notes out of it. Easily I can write a paper of it because it's already structured, right? As you can see, it's already structured one step after another. And uh, I just copy paste everything and find something that meaningful to connect them. Yeah. Yeah. But one thing I, I, I would like to share again with you is when I had the idea of writing those two papers, and I did uh, out of this system, but because mm -hmm. I didn't have enough notes to support the writing. So mm -hmm. I, I started from this system, but I couldn't wait to do those two papers. So I still go through a lot of literature without taking notes to, to input into this system. That's why, I mean, I started experimenting with this system at least three months ago, but mm -hmm. I only have like 78 notes in it because of after I created this system, I found these two topics I wanted to write. So I just jump into writing there Mm -hmm. So I use the, you know, on topic reading method. I just mm -hmm. come with this topic. I look for literature around it. So I didn't uh, actually spend the time writing notes out of those literature <laughs> because, <laughs> because writing permanent notes, writing literature notes really need very thorough reading of um, mm -hmm. literature, right? But when you do topic reading, let's say, um, the latest paper I wrote was to review e-learning in entrepreneurship education, um, the status quo of this branch development in the literature. So I, I don't have many things in my sleep box uh, related to e-learning. So I had to, to search for the literature related to that and, and read them in detail, but I didn't you know, put anything into the sleep box yet, yeah, but I have to. And uh, that's just to say there are two systems, of course. Um, when you don't have enough backup in the sleep box, you can only rely on the other one, you know, on topic uh, read, reading to, to do very extensive, in, intensive reading in a short period to fast comprehend the, the topic and write something out of it. You know, yeah. but even you do that, you have to spend some time to convert that result into your sleep box mm -hmm. because you don't want it to be wasted. Right. So that's what I'm trying to do now. Um, for pre for presenting to you, I also reflect on this experience, and I got to know what to do next. I also, you know, renew the interface of my literature box, my my sleep box, permanent notes. 
before showing to you because uh, it would be, it was very trashy before now it has to mm -hmm. see the <laughs> see the visitors so i have to reorganize it but it's a very interesting insightful experience and i hi highly recommend you to do it it i mm -hmm. promise you it's going to be very very beneficial experience for you yeah i can imagine how beneficial that will be but it's hard to for me to wait do it daily especially i think doing this system it, it will be quite lux, it's quite luxury to do like for scholars well but for like a student when you have too so many other things you have to do it might be hard just to you have to uh put so many effort into doing this hmm i understand i mean i i, I did uh, all these notes, I realized the, the difficulty of it. But um, that's, that's all try because even you don't do this, you're going to have more work wasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may, you, you, you may feel like you're progressing, but you are not accumulating enough in your brain because the brain, um, we, we hardly know how it works. Right, mm -hmm. you you hardly can evaluate how much you absorb from what you read mm -hmm. until you need to teach, for instance. Because I need to prepare for this presentation, I need to go through that book again, and mm -hmm. I realize a lot of things I actually didn't understand. Because there's another bias in psychology that is, if you see this before, when you see it again, you feel you already know it. Ah, uh, what, what's the but name no. of it? But, but no, that's not true. Mm -hmm. By looking again, feel familiar with it, doesn't mean you you master it already. You mm -hmm. know, let's say you see the concept of a, um, a medi mediator or moderator in statistics, you know, and you see mediator again, so mm, I know mediator, but do you really know the difference between mediator and moderator? Mm -hmm. Right? You have to explain to a person first to understand you don't know about it. Right, right. You have to teach to learn. So I think that is a very, very interesting approach as well. If mm -hmm. you cannot teach other people, teach yourself first. Don't cheat on your learning. And that's very important. If, if you know there's a tool that can help you learn better, try to do it one step at a time. Let's say not six notes a day, just one note a day. Let's say you can only read the paper in five days. Just take one note out of that paper a day. And accumulate some first to see, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, one approach doesn't fit all, but this approach, I mean, Luhmann used it, published over 70 books, over four, 400 scholarly work. I use it in short while, I produced two papers out of it, not published, mm -hmm. but at least some writing out of it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very inspiring. I cannot. Uh, express more than this it's very inspiring system once you dive into it but first i would recommend you to read that book that book is not that long but it's very interesting it's very it's very inspiring yeah but if you don't um, have time to do that you can start experimenting this method already and when you find some uh, let's say concern or unsure things you can ask me if i know i will tell you or you can mm -hmm. go back to the book and uh, and reflect on what he shares mm -hmm. yeah well, thank you you're Welcome. a very good person very persuasive <laughs> <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> because i suffer from this process i mean i did i, I did my research for almost what 10 years now but mm. i you know moved from project to project and hardly i can say that i accumulate knowledge across them mm. you know mm. because we forget we easily forget. We cannot even remember the title of the project we worked five years ago, right? right. So we have to rely on this kind of uh, external um, scaffolder to help mm -hmm. us understand in the long term. Right. So when I realized that, oh, all these years 
I can write in my resume, yeah, like this, this project I did, but I cannot really tell I'm a knowledgeable person <laughs> in the topic. And that is such a pity thing to say. That is because you didn't reflect enough. That's because you didn't write enough related to the field, you know? So I just hope you guys don't repeat this mistake. You know, accumulate it on time in the early stage will benefit your career development, your personal development so well in the long term. I guarantee that because I walk the path, I walk the wrong way. So now I am pointing to the right way to you. Yeah. So stick to it. Try first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What mistake has already happened, but I'll try to <laughs> correct it. No. Yeah, I think I read a paper after 10 pages. Well, wait, this looks familiar. I think I read it before. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, you mentioned that you use a paper and pen. You have some notes already. Think about converting them into this permanent notes first. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so don't let those work wasted. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the sharing for today. Um, the next sharing, you're going to do it. Oh, <laughs> so you're the first. The only person. <laughs> event. So you think about it, and uh, when you finish your presentation, you assign the next one. Okay. okay. So you think about the topic, and then you can communicate with me later. Okay. So my question is like a. Before I said this is um, a good but a research method, you know, um, so it's not like a, oh, this is about a, this is a qualitative method, this is a qualitative. It's like a, a way you do research. Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, at the beginning when I set up this research methodology, it is really to learn quantitative uh, methods, qualitative mm -hmm. methods, mixed methods, research designs, all those kind of things. But th since I am um, the first presenter and mm -hmm. uh, I am building up this system, I feel it's very important to build up this kind of system. So I chose this topic to present, uh, to, to kick, kick off the, this presentation. Mm -hmm. So in the next presentation, you can start pulling us back to to that method. So let's say you wrote something before and you use, for instance, the um, bibliographic, uh, no, bi bibliometric method. You said you're familiar with it. You you use it before. Well, I, have, I read that before, but I'm not sure if I can explain it well. Yeah, exactly <laughs> now. I mean, exactly go back to the thing we were talking before. You read it one time second time you're familiar with it or not now it's the time to teach other people to test if you really know it you know mm -hmm. it's it's a practice that you do also um one purpose of this kind of teaching is to accumulate the teaching material of your own in the future let's say you stay in university you need to teach you need to give a workshop you need to give seminars on something right so you mm -hmm. have to teach your students or teach your peer about things. So you, you accumulate teaching materials over time. That's also very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next time, maybe you can present about a bibliometric method. Um, I, I, will, I, will look, I will look some paper and I will decide and I'll tell, tell yeah. you. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's your freedom to choose which one to go first. Okay. Okay. It's, thank uh, you for attending today. Oh, thank you. And to then other people can enjoy it. It's really helpful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad it's beneficial to you. So I hope um, after a while, when we sit down together, we can share our sleeper box progress and then, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, then we can correct each other, share more to improve each other's sleeper box systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I hope you can publish and uh, um, out of this system very, very efficiently. Yeah, I will try to do a thing and get one paper in three months. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> okay, have a nice day, Jane. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.